This is the actual start of our journey, the Gordon Murray Service Centre in Barcelona. And very soon I get to drive T50 for the first time. I am so excited. But first, I need to know what I'm doing. And for that, I have Nick Hoyle, the Chief Engineer. Hello, Nick. Hello, how are you doing? Nice very good you. indeed. Thank you very much. Very right. What do I need to know about your very precious and valuable our car? fantastic PS4. Yes. Our yes. So first of all, you need the key. There you go. Thank you very much indeed. That's quite light, isn't yes, it? Yes, it is. Yes, <laughs> everything about the car is super light. Right. One of our USB Nick then proceeds to tell me everything I need to know about actually operating the T50, from how to open the doors and get in. Exactly, a feet in first, sit feet on the passenger seat, Yep. and then uh, and shift yourself across. into the driver's seat just like you were different in an F1. To how to use the aircon, charge my phone, where to store stuff and what the controls do, such as the... Yeah, the 13,000 RPM <laughs> uh, uh, rev counter. that makes you laugh uh, as well. Uh, every time, it doesn't ever get old, <laughs> thankfully. It's flanked by two screens, the right running the infotainment and rear camera, the left used for car information such as tyre pressure, fan speed and wing angle. As Nick puts it, yeah. all, the, all the cool geeky stuff. We also talk about the astonishing 4 litre naturally aspirated Cosworth V12. Sport mode. So GT right. mode is standard. Um, uh, sport mode gives you a much more linear throttle map, and the right. car follows the pedal much more. So you get, put a bit of gas on, you get a response. Yeah. yeah, a little bit off, you get a, um, a similar response. And does That's it do anything mode. else? Because it doesn't make it, it doesn't adjust the suspension, no. does it? No, no, no. it's just, just the throttle. throttle pedal map. Right. So you get twelve thousand RPM in every uh, in yeah. both modes. You get the full crazy responsiveness of the engine, the fifty-two thousand yeah. RPM a second. <laughs> get a good. <laughs> yeah. Um, 50, get 52,000 RPM a second? We've measured 52,000 RPM a second. Oh my God. So other, other car manufacturers have suggested their engines react more quickly than any other in the world. Yeah. They don't, ours does. <laughs> 52,000 RPM a second, it's, it's bonkers wow. numbers, right? In essence, to get going, to drive away right now, that's all you that's need it. to know. I mean, it looks so, so straightforward because you just get in, you understand all the controls really quickly. Yes. Because it's simple and it's yeah. sort of understandable. And then you've just got a six-speed H-pattern yes. gearbox and a, and a fly-off handbrake. A fly-off handbrake. Should have mentioned the fly-off handbrake. Yeah. Because it's really important that mm. for us that this is a car that you get out what you put in. So the more mm. time you spend with it, the more effort you put into it, the yeah. more reward you're going to get from driving it. Yeah. This isn't a car where you get in and in, within a mile of driving down the road you think you know it. Mm. We, we don't want that. Yeah. We want you to learn. The message is clear. The T50 is going to take some learning. So I don't mind admitting I was feeling a bit daunted the next morning when I turned out onto the streets of Barcelona. So here we go then, equal parts trepidation and elation. I'm trying to keep the silly smile off my face. First gear change in a T50. Oh my God, that's easy. The view out is just amazing. I mean, you feel like you're the, the bonnet seems to be right on top of your toes. Your down angle is so good on it. And the sense of space, because it already feels narrow, it's just a bit of a sensory bombardment. So PS4 is not a PlayStation code, it is the final pre-series prototype before the T50 goes into production. One and two are currently doing testing, three was shunted into a crash structure, and four, four is what I'm driving. The last one before they start building the customer cars. I can't believe how light and tractable it feels. Oh, the engine sounds quite sort of plain and airy low down and then you suddenly get a little bark of it starting to come in. Oh, massive speed bump. This is gonna be interesting. I mean, genuinely massive. Let's try it. No issues whatsoever. Straight up and over. This is one of the things they really worked on was not having nose lift because it adds extra weight so you can cope with the speed. The T50 isn't like other hypercars. It feels and behaves more like a Lotus than a Bugatti or Pagani. It has this in common with its predecessor. Gordon Murray has made no secret of the fact that T50 copies the template of the legendary McLaren F1. It's a driver's car. It doesn't have the artistry, glamour or impact we associate with other multi-million pound cars. 
Both then and now, Gordon wanted a car that broke with supercar tradition. So think of this as both tribute and replacement. Now, I don't think the T50 has quite such a strong visual identity and graphic signature as the F1, but I do like the under the radar subtlety of it, the fact it's not too ostentatious. Anything else I'm not too sure of? Well, I've spoken about the seat and one or two other things already. So how about the key? Yes, it's very light and it's got a little built-in Allen key here that allows you to take it apart and discover there's nothing more than a circuit board inside. But it's a bit big and chunky for a small, dainty car. However, it does allow you to do this. No other car is packaged like this. No other hypercar is as light or as usable as this. It bucks the trend. It breaks from that more ornate, overtly luxurious template laid down by cars like the Pagani Huayra and Bugatti Chiron. Look how open it is inside, how much room there is for kit in the flanks. Now we have done lots on the T50 already. We've done walk around films. We've had Gordon himself show us around the car. And I don't want to cover too much old ground. I want to show you things you haven't seen before, starting with the toolkit. Here we are then, have a look at this. We've got the brake fluid reservoir, the screen wash filler here, your tire inflation kits, titanium towing eye, which shows some signs of use and the star of the show, Pièce de Résistance, the titanium nitride coated gold toolkit. Let's hope we don't need it today. The T50 gains 28,400 revs per second, only it doesn't. That was Cosworth's initial figure. Their latest calculation is 52,000 revs per second. Idle to the red line in 0.2 seconds. Here's what that sounds like. Right, aero. Let's close these down gently. Now, no big wings, obviously. Instead, the funky fan with its various modes. Now, as you well know, it's more about stability than downforce. But still, 460 kilos at the 226 mile an hour VMAX is not to be sniffed at. Much more importantly, though, it's got a demo mode. Hope you enjoyed our impromptu shampoo advert there. But I'm now going to show you the cabin because I've spent a couple of days with the car and I think I've nailed the technique for getting in and out. Basically, one leg in, crouch down. There is a handle here to help you, but I find it easier to put my hand across, hand there, and just sort of shuffle my bum in. Now, once you're in, I had to go to Gordon Murray and do a full seat fitting because the steering wheel and the pedals, it's a little bit of a hassle to move them around. But for me, this driving position is now perfection. There is no better driving position in the world. Just this clear view ahead and these such well-organized instruments. One thing I was worried about though, is the little compartments here, because the magnets aren't very strong and I worried they would pop open, but no issues, nothing has come flying out yet. Down here, there's more storage and the little fly-off handbrake with its sort of open, drilled out finish. It's just beautiful. Right, over this side, the other side of the seat, we've got the gear lever. Listen, this is all ASMR in here. The click of these dials and the action, this is my favorite, the action of the reverse cutout switch is just gorgeous. I just love having to get into reverse because I get to operate that switch. And behind it, even more important, the starter button under its cover. Now it will stay up, but it's designed 
for you to just slide your finger in and press it, which is what I'm going to do now. Dingling, isn't it? And in all likelihood, it will be the last, the last great analog supercar we will ever see. And if it is, we can at least say we went out on a high. Because, oh my God, the gear change, the noise, the engine, the steering wheel, the pedals, the driving position, the view out, the noise again the everything about this car. It is sublime. So just sit back and listen to it. 